Good afternoon. Happy New Year. Go dogs and go Falcons. <laughs> Standing here today as the 60th mayor of Atlanta is truly one of the happiest moments of my life. I want to thank all of Atlanta and each and every one of you here today for your support and encouragement and your faith in me. I am truly blessed to be among so many friends and loved ones this afternoon in the Martin Luther King Jr. International Chapel on the campus of Morehouse College. I want to thank my husband Derek and my children Lance, Langston, Lincoln, and Lennox for their love and for their courage and patience they have shown throughout our campaign. I want to thank my mother, Sylvia, and my father, Major Lance, for raising a girl who was taught to believe in the possibility of the extraordinary. I know my daddy is leading the great crowd of witnesses from heaven who are smiling down on us today, including his mother, Lucinda Lance, and my maternal grandparents, Clifford and Ramona Robinson, who came to Atlanta in a horse and buggy from East Georgia. They were the grandchildren of former slaves and came to Atlanta as children with their parents who were seeking opportunity in this shining city on a hill. I stand here this afternoon carrying the hope of the slave. I'm grateful to my sister Tracy, my sister Gail, my brother Darian, and all of my family and friends, our many volunteers, the faith-based community, and my team for always being at my side with an extraordinary amount of energy, inspiration, and belief in the impossible. I want to thank all of our current and past elected officials who are here with us today, especially my former colleagues on the Atlanta City Council and each of Atlanta's previous mayors. I want to give special thanks to my friend and my predecessor, Mayor Kasim Reed. Thank you for your unwavering support and outstanding stewardship of our city over the last eight years. I know Sarah Elizabeth and Maria Kristen will be glad to have Mayor Reed around a bit more in the coming days. But before he leaves, please join me in a round of applause for Mayor Reed. It would be nice to say that being elected mayor of my hometown is the culmination of a lifelong dream. The truth is that I never imagined this path for myself. Like so many couples, Derek and I were focused on our careers and raising our four beautiful children. My passion for public service had found an outlet in my church, my community, and in my professional role as a lawyer, judge, and then a member of city council. I am not a historian, but I do believe I am the first mayor in at least recent history to have served in all three branches of government, and I think that's pretty cool. But even as I was engaged in my roles as wife, mother, and professional, my spirit was restless, and I didn't quite know why. At various stages of my life, I asked myself, what would I do if I were not afraid to fail? This time when I asked myself, the answer was clear. And after much soul searching and prayer, this 
is the path I felt compelled to take. One of my favorite Bible verses is Proverbs 19.21, and it says, Many are the plans of a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. What I know to be true is that the Lord's purpose has a home in my heart, and that purpose will inspire and guide me to be the mayor that I know God created me to be. I am indeed grateful for such a time as this. I am thrilled to serve as only the second woman mayor of our great city. And I also know we'll do very well next year with a woman governor. So I know the time is right again for a woman to lead the city of Atlanta. On the night of the runoff, I spoke of black girl magic. Black girl magic is something I have experienced throughout my life and experienced daily during our campaign. I truly believe it was the energy and inspiration of generations of black girl magic that fueled our victory. But we now have a new challenge in front of us. We must extend that magic and create an Atlanta magic in every community, every school, and every workplace across this great city. It is imperative that we be united so we can move forward and take the next great step in our collective future. Now is the time for us to put aside race and division and geography and politics and invest in becoming one Atlanta. As the 60th mayor of Atlanta, I will seek a new understanding, one grounded in civility and productive dialogue to build a greater Atlanta. We must draw on the power of the Olympic spirit and the shared purpose of the civil rights era and become an undivided Atlanta, locked arm in arm to build our children's future and our city's destiny. We will succeed because the prayers of generations are with us. When we are one Atlanta, I believe that we are truly unstoppable. 50 years ago last month, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. gave his final sermon at Ebenezer Baptist Church. That day, he spoke about the way our faith encompasses the cosmic companionship that we all have with one another. I believe as Dr. King believed that we are all interconnected tied into a single garment of destiny. To overcome our biggest challenges, we must put our differences aside and join in a common mission to lift everyone up. To quote the feminist poet Audre Lorde, it is not our differences that divide us. It is our inability to recognize, accept, and celebrate those differences. But there are some differences that we just cannot accept. It's no secret that we have economic disparity in Atlanta. That's why the theme of our campaign was keep Atlanta moving forward, leaving no one behind. That's why my administration will prioritize affordability and equity in the city of Atlanta. We cannot stand by and watch prosperity for some push others out of the city and strand them on the margins of society. In the coming months, we will roll out a $1 billion affordability plan that will create equity and provide opportunity for all Atlantans. It will be the largest housing investment in our city's history. We have done our due diligence for eight years to put Atlanta's finances in a strong place. Now we must maintain and use that solvency as a runway where everyone can take flight to achieve their dreams. We must also re-inspire confidence in our city government. That's why I plan to introduce the most sweeping ethics 
and transparency reform package in our city's history. We will make lobbyists register and require increased disclosure from our elected officials, including the release of tax returns. And we will clean up our contracting and procurement process by bringing in leading procurement experts to conduct a top-to-bottom review of our purchasing department and recommend any and all changes necessary to ensure taxpayers feel confident that city contracts are awarded on merit and merit only. I believe that transparency enables good government, and I will not rest until all the business of city contracts is beyond reproach. Nothing less is acceptable. We need to be a safe city. But as we work to ensure the safety of Atlantans, we must make sure that our police force is comprised of men and women who respect the communities they are sworn to serve and protect. As we grow our police department, we need officers who will continue to honor our city's legacy of respecting diversity in all its forms, race, religion, sexual orientation, and culture. We have an opportunity to set a new course, building upon the pre-arrest diversion initiative and connecting people to services and support rather than funneling them through the criminal justice system. We have the opportunity for real reform and to build genuine respect and understanding between our officers and our neighborhoods. Education is key to achieving One Atlanta. During my campaign, I spoke about my time as a judge when I would watch men come into court and fill out applications to secure representation of a public defender, and the vast majority of them had not finished ninth grade. It is essential that we improve our schools. As our city continues to grow and attract new residents, young families are going to want to move into communities with great schools. Great schools should not just be an option for the wealthy, but for all who call Atlanta home. The neighborhood where a child is born should never dictate the quality of education that child receives. Access to a high-quality public education is a fundamental American right. Creating opportunities to fully realize the genius of our children is vital to the health of our economy and a strong and secure future for our city and country. The words of Frederick Douglass remain true. It's easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. And while our city government does not run our school system, we cannot ignore our moral responsibility. Education can and must be our priority. I believe that we either pay on the front end or we pay on the back end. And friends, I know that we are all weary of paying on the back end. That is why, as mayor, I will appoint a chief education officer to my senior staff. This chief education officer will address everything from early childhood education to our partnership with Atlanta Public Schools to vocational training and apprenticeships. They will keep the future of our children and our communities where they deserve to be, at the front of our mission and our agenda. The transformation that is needed in our schools will require our collective courage and commitment over the long term if we are to achieve our shared vision for Atlanta's children and families. I am putting a stake in the ground today that the city of Atlanta is committed to strengthening public education for all of our children and every family and every community.
just as we know access to education can transform lives, so can access to transit. My grandmother worked for Davison's and then Macy's in Lenox Square for over 30 years, starting when African Americans could not work on the sales floor. When MARTA was created, she rode the bus every day from her home off of ML King to Lenox Square. I am living proof that the very existence of transit can impact families for generations. MARTA was a pathway for my grandmother to help support her family and put money in the pockets of her grandchildren. And by each of us in insurance policy, all of my cousins are smiling. <laughs> the one of which I cashed to open my first bank account at 17, the same bank account that I have today. We must continue to provide transit options for our working families and build on the largest expansion of MARTA in its history. I look forward to working with our state and regional partners as we identify ways to expand transit throughout Metro Atlanta. Families are depending on us and Atlanta's future depends on it. I also look forward to working with our partners at the Gold Dome to reauthorize the municipal option sales tax, a one penny sales tax, which funds our sewer and water infrastructure. Because of this penny sales tax, our Department of Watershed Management is able to keep water and sewer rates stable. And I know a little something about unstable water bills. <laughs> Did y'all hear about that? <laughs> I look forward to working with members of city council this year to protect against skyrocketing water and sewer bills and to continue the work of overhauling our infrastructure. Atlanta is a world-class city and our credit and infrastructure should reflect that. We came back from the Great Recession and worked hard for eight years to put Atlanta's finances in a strong place. We've, had, we've made many sacrifices, been good stewards of your tax dollars, and as a result, Atlanta is on its strongest financial footing in more than 40 years. That is why I will pursue a triple A credit rating for Atlanta, the highest a city can achieve. We are close, but we need to finish the job and show the world that Atlanta's capacity to meet its financial commitments cannot be surpassed. I am also excited to expand the Clean City Initiative to clean up and beautify the major entrances and exits to our cities and amazing neighborhoods. I will ask our Department of Public Works to bring forward recommendations to beautify more of our public spaces and to enhance our public places with pedestrian-friendly improvements. To remain a leading city, we must be a clean and beautiful city. As promised, I will push our progressive agenda forward by creating commissions in the critical areas of criminal justice reform affordable housing, homelessness, economic development, and workforce training. These commissions will provide comprehensive proposals for policy initiatives with a recommendation for implementation within the first 100 days of my administration and beyond. We are going to address our city's pressing challenges together and openly with public participation at every stage. It is vital for us to understand the insights of our nonprofit community and to listen to the voices of our historically marginalized neighborhoods. We have seen how successful engagement can work in our city. To build one Atlanta, we must work together and not be at odds with one another. That is why 
I am committed to working with the Atlanta City Council to resolve issues surrounding property deeds to the Atlanta Public Schools and land on the Morris Brown campus. It is time for us to move forward. I know that we must continue to enhance and fortify the greatest concentration of historically black colleges and universities in the world. Right here in the city of Atlanta, the home of Morehouse, Morehouse School of Medicine, Spelman College, Clark Atlanta University, Morris Brown, and the Interdenominational Theological Center, and to make them meaningful partners in the transformation that's happening on the West Side. I also want to take a moment here to point out Mayor Reed and Ambassador Young that as a graduate of Florida a and University, I am the first Atlanta mayor who is an HBCU graduate who did not attend Morehouse or Howard University. I'm very proud to say the streak has been broken. Nevertheless, the Atlanta University Center, along with schools such as Georgia Tech, Georgia State, where I met my husband, and Emory University, will continue to produce the talented and diverse workforce that will remain the envy of the United States. But we must make sure that all of our young people have an equal and fair chance to attend these institutions. That is why I am pleased to announce that I will work with stakeholders across the city to create a citywide children's college savings account for each child entering kindergarten in the Atlanta public schools. As Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon that can be used to change the world. You never know where people will find success. My father went from a sharecropper's farm in Mississippi to the Cabrini Green housing projects in Chicago to become a world-famous Grammy-nominated recording artist. He did it through talent and sheer persistence. He would not take no for an answer, and my family says that's where I got my persistence from. That's how he got his first record deal. He used to sit in the lobby of OK Records every morning with a cup of coffee for the man who ran the record label. He persisted. And finally, he got his big break, and that man, Carl Davis, got tired of drinking coffee. <laughs> I didn't have an appreciation for how famous my dad was until after he died and the internet came along, and I saw him on American Bandstand and on Soul Train. To me, he was just daddy, who coached a little league baseball team at Adams Park and happened to know some famous people. During my campaign for the first time, I spoke extensively about my dad's struggles with addiction and incarceration. And it's not uncommon in many families to find good people dealing with personal issues that sometimes cause them to make bad decisions. It doesn't diminish their love for us, nor our love for them. My daddy always wanted the best for me. He always made me believe that the extraordinary was within my reach if I worked hard and if I persisted. That is a feeling all of our young people should have, no matter what their circumstances are. A few days before Christmas, I was busy with my transition team when I got a text from the courthouse telling me that a verdict was coming down in the case of my nephew. A little more than three years ago, my nephew Darius was an innocent bystander in a gang war and was murdered in a case of mistaken identity just a few blocks from where we are today. When I went to the courtroom that day, I saw three young men who could have been any of our sons, and I looked at them sitting there emotionless as they were found guilty on all counts. 
I looked at my brother-in-law and I looked at my father-in-law and the other family members in the courtroom that day and I thought to myself, what is the win in this? My nephew wouldn't be home for Christmas and those boys wouldn't be home for the holidays. And it reminded me as I told my husband that this is what this election has been all about. It's about making sure that as leaders of this city, we are making decisions that will allow our young people to live and to grow and become all that God created them to be. It is what I want for my own children. I know that we can make it a reality for all of our children. When I was running for mayor, it never occurred to me that nobody outside of my kitchen actually thought we might win. <laughs> and the people in that kitchen worked so hard to help us get here today. My mother worked harder than me on this campaign. She comes to my house every morning before I wake up and it's often there after I go to bed to care for our children. My husband Derek and I celebrated our 23rd wedding anniversary on the campaign trail and he has been with me every step of the way. And I cannot express how much it means to have shared this journey with our sons and our daughter, and I see my son Lennox is over this because he's asleep now. <laughs> and I know you all wish you were Lennox right now. <laughs> They too made sacrifices and every night spent at a forum was a night away from them. But just as a parent believes in their children, my children believed in me. So to Lance Langston Lincoln, and we'll tell Lennox when he wakes up. <laughs> Thank you. I hope that as Mommy Mayor, I will continue to make you all proud. But what we knew from the moment that I made the decision to run for mayor, that this was about something bigger than our family. It's about something bigger than all of us. And the reason I was able to keep my head held high, even on the toughest, toughest days, was because I knew I was doing what God had placed on my heart to do. My prayer is that we continue to work together for what is right, because there is real work to be done, and that work begins today. My grandfather took great comfort in the book of Ruth and the words, your people will be my people. Wherever you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. That is both my pledge and my charge to Atlanta. I will go with you but let us go together. Let us be each other's people because in Atlanta, our magic is intentionality. Our magic is leadership. Our magic is authentic. Our magic is in our communities. Our magic is our people. Only in Atlanta could a young man have a dream and shift the conscience of a nation. Only in Atlanta could the civic, business, and government communities come together to bring the Olympic Games to our backyard. And only in Atlanta could a young girl named Keisha Who a 
attended Frederick Douglass High School on the west side of Atlanta, go on to become the 60th mayor of the greatest city in the world. The bar has been set incredibly high for our city and I thank you for your belief in me. I thank you for your belief that as one Atlanta, we can raise the bar higher still because I am Atlanta magic. You are Atlanta magic. We are Atlanta magic and Atlanta magic is real. I am honored to be your 60th mayor. Thank you, Atlanta.